little special guest for you, Truth Nation. Special guest, why? Because, all right, so let's do a little back digging on this, Ilona. Okay, first of all, uh, special guest because you're esteemed, not only the partner of... Uh, the uh, and certified law specialist of the Antonian Miranda firm. No, I'm a certified family law specialist, and I'm a partner in the largest family law firm in Southern California. See, and she's on point, too. See that right there? Already chin checking the host, making sure <laughs> I got them words all arranged correctly. I'm already so. My intern was my student at California Western, where I teach uh, family law. I was just going to brag about that on you, too. So good job doing it for yourself. But those are all awesome, but that's not why you're sitting in the chair right now. You're sitting in the chair because we got to talk about some stuff, okay? So something that you and I kind of come into quite a bit in our own uh, uh, professional realms is when, you know, th- relationships start, they don't end up going too well, things happen, and then it gets all fun and clever and dirty and sometimes even downright nasty. The one uh, that came up recently, which I want to ask you about is... What happens if if one is cheating, okay, and then spending money on the person or persons that they're potentially cheating with, and it might even be their shared money on the others? What 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 goes on there? Well, it starts to become a problem once parties separate, because when one files for divorce within the first sixty days, you have to do financial disclosures, and mm-hmm. usually you have an in spouse who knows everything about the finances, right. and an out spouse who may or may not have access to the online accounts, may or may not check the credit card statements or bank accounts, may have suspicion that one is cheating but decides to stay in a marriage and see if things work out. Well, once the divorce is filed, then it's a fair game. We start doing discovery. Mm -hmm. And if one has suspicions, we start investigating those suspicions by analyzing the bank statements, by analyzing credit card statements, and seeing where the money is spent. So if if um, for example, you see Victoria's Secret charges, and it was not for the wife, or you see gifts. It's like, box- wait a minute, I see no Victoria's Secret boxes up in here, right? Or if um, I had where women were buying really nice gifts for men too, and jewelry purchases that were mm-hmm. you know for men's jewelry, mm-hmm. you know those things come up where then the spouse can seek credits and credit reimbursement, mm-hmm. and also sanctions for what's called breach of fiduciary duty, because these are gifts that are given without the consent mm. of the other spouse. Uh, so I can talk more uh, about... Well, what do they say? What, what did they say if the argument is it's my money? Like, I made it. He all, makes his money, I make my money, or vice versa. In California, there is no such thing unless you have a prenup, or you would have to trace that it's in fact your money, because all earnings dur- earned during the marriage, unless you have a prenup, are presumed to be community property. So all assets, all money, every single thing you buy, if it's once you are married, it's community property. Well, what? Oh, hold on. Okay, the, but what if like, what if one person's doing good in the marriage and the other person's the one cheating? Isn't it that person's fault? California is a no-fault state. So when you file for divorce, we have a special box on the petition that's that says irreconcilable differences. Mm. And that's all that matters. Uh, the evidence of any wrongdoing does not come in. And if you do file a petition explaining all the million ways you were cheated, that can be stricken and omitted from um, the court's consideration. Mm. And you could even be sanctioned for violating the policy of the state of California for presenting that evidence. Um, it matters in other regards, like when you're fighting over custody and visitation, if you're involved with someone who uh, is problematic, has a criminal history, uses drugs, alcohol, is involved in prostitution, you know, and at that point, you can bring information that will show fault or that you're doing things wrong, but not to seek the solution of marriage. Mm-hmm. And it's actually chomping at the bit of some other questions I got coming up on some future segments. So, gang, if you're watching this one, trust me, you're going to want to go into the annals, uh, thegreenhousegroupinc.com forward slash truth radio and check those out because we got some good stuff coming up in the rest of this hour. And by the way, so you got fans lined up around the building right now chanting your name, <laughs> you know, uh, with the signs made and everything in anticipation of you being here. But for someone who maybe doesn't know you yet, what? how would you introduce yourself? Well, I'm a... Uh... Certified family law specialist. I specific, only practice family law. I love family law. It's so much fun because for the 
you know, 11 something years that I've been doing it, uh, you never hear the same story. Mm. Uh, people come with problems. The process is the same in terms of filing the petition, um, getting certain orders in place, but the stories are always different. And from the family, as a family law attorney, I love my job because I get to make a difference. I help people get the custody of their children mm. because often I see that parents manipulate getting financial benefits in exchange for letting the other see their children. And you also see spouses where one has more is more dominant than the other. So they need a lawyer to be the bad guy for them to get them what they deserve to establish that relationship with the kids. Same thing with, um, you know, support. We help people get child support, spouse support, divide property, investigate what's out there to make sure that people get fair division of their marital estate. Um, so that's what I do. I do restraining orders, custody, property division, spouse support, all the fun stuff. And I hear crazy stories all the time and help people get through a very difficult divorce process. It's normally very emotional and painful. You know, even those who seem to be tough from the outside, you know, are still hurting inside Mm -hmm. and need to be guided, um, in many ways. It's Ilona Antonian Gang, and you can check her out at expertdivorcelaw.com. And she's even got one of those old school phone numbers you can call. Those things still work. I think it's 619-696-1100. You mentioned something actually which which spawned. So, you know, threading back in this concept, you know, the, the frame of this is the truth about what if, you know, one's cheating, spending money earned during the marriage on, on the other's. I mean, it sounds deplorable, and it also sounds like a great topic for a good radio show. Um, but what happens if there is children going on in there? Does that change the dynamic of, of that at all? No. It doesn't matter if you have children and you're cheating or if you don't have children and you're cheating. The bottom line is, are you going to get divorced or not? Are you going to get stay together or not? Will you seek counseling to work things out? Or will you continue hiding it until you get caught? And if you get caught, then you deal with it at that point, which most of the people do. And sometimes think pa- things pass. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had, um, I- I've had a case where a client contacted me many years ago, about, well, like four years ago, because she was having problems with her husband. And um, she retained me because she wanted to conflict me out because the husband, uh, she was worried he would retain her office. Conflict me out means? Meaning that she wanted to hire us before the other side would hire us so that if he would call the office, she already had the money and trust and that we were not allowed to speak with him. Got it. You know, because if a client calls your office and you spoke with wife or husband or either of the party, we as lawyers, we keep uh, we are supposed to keep track of it. If we discuss their case with them, we're conflicted out. We cannot um, help the other person, even if we're not hired. If we get if we met with the client, advise them, we're out. So got it. A lot of people actually want to conflict out good firms in San Diego by calling different lawyers and mm-hmm. making sure that the husband or wife does not get that attorney on the other side. It's pretty malicious. Um, you know, it's smart. <laughs> so, so she retained me four years ago, but then they were working out their marriage. They went to family counseling for three years, and she thought and she filed, she wanted to get a divorce because um, she caught him cheating with um, a woman who's children were in the same softball team as her children, mm. a woman with whom she was going to lunch like two times a week and uh, was involved in various activities in the community. And they were friends. But yes. then she found out the husband was also more than friends with her. So they wanted a divorce. Uh, she wanted a divorce, but she also wanted to save the marriage. So they went to counseling because husband, uh, uh, you know, there's a saying, it's probably not going to sound politically correct, but it's true. Men often say it's cheaper to keep her. So he tried to work it out. I've heard that said before. <laughs> and he tried to work it out uh, by going to counseling with her. Well, he kept her in counseling for three years, causing her to believe things are getting better. But she, she still did not feel loved and she felt like something was wrong until one day she got a hold. One day, it was about six months ago, she got a hold of um, an audio recording that he accidentally recorded but while driving, and she listened to it and then heard uh, that he was dialing that other woman, and they were speaking on terms that they were, you know, she, they seemed very close. And, um, you know, that day she kicked him out of the house when he came home, but she also, well, before she told him she, he was out of the house, she followed him and saw him park at the woman's apartment, um, go inside. Then she went nuts, of course, went home to call his stuff, and uh, 
came back and threw it all over the parking lot on his car and her car. Dude, was Joey Greco there with the cheaters it was, van? It was. I wish it was. I'm like, could you have taken a picture for me? This would have been awesome. She threw his socks and underwear all over his car, sprinkled it on her car and his car, Yummy. and the parking lot and all the bushes. And yeah. Anyway, so it was a fun story. That's a great PR moment right there. And <laughs> and that gang is exactly why 